All right, guys. Well, welcome everybody to our Tuesday night webinar. My name is John Skelton. I'm with apexinvesting.com. So welcome to our Be the Sniper or Be the Target webinar here. And as always, got to pop up some disclosures here. Trading has risk. Make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. Okay. A uh, couple reminders, just to let you know, guys, I did not know this was coming in tonight, but we have had some crazy bad weather here. Had some wind and rain, had a bunch of hail. And uh, so I'm hoping I don't lose power or internet during the webinar here. So if I do, it's not because I bailed on you because something's good on TV. It's because I lost internet or power. So bear with me here. If that happens and I'm gone, that's that's what's going on. So hoping uh, hoping everything stays good and uh, hoping my, my truck doesn't get too much hail damage. I went out and the hail started, so I went out and moved my truck to uh, put it under a tree. It's I will lift the truck. It's too tall to be in my garage. So I went and moved it under a tree to keep some of the hail off of it. And as soon as I did that, the wind came in, started blowing branches all around. I was like, oh, great. Darn if I do, darn if I don't, you know? So, yeah, Marion, it's it's coming in uh, it's coming in hard. So, anyway, if you lose me, that's what's going on here. Um, also, another quick reminder, you guys have really enjoyed the flash sales that uh, I've been doing. I'm going to run a couple more this Friday and Saturday. So, I'll announce it, blast it out, email it, text it, post it. I think we're going to probably do a flash sale on, um, probably do two of them. Probably do one on, let's say, Markers Plus, for those of you that don't have the uh, automated uh, trading assistant. And uh, maybe I'll do some kind of six month or annual or something. We'll throw it out there, though. I want to throw these out there to you every, uh, every so often. So we're going to do some of those um, this weekend. So be on the lookout for that. How many of you were in the trade room this morning, uh, the elite room, when... Uh, I was talking a little bit about the fast markets. We were mainly talking about how in queue this morning was just crazy fast, right? And we, we see that a lot, uh, especially right, right at open. Um, and I, I, felt like, I felt like we had a pretty good discussion in the room today. Um, so I, you know, I'm sorry for those of you that missed it, but for those of you that are there, I, I hope it was helpful. We talked a lot about NQ. We get so focused on NQ because that's, you know, a market that moves quite a bit. That's a market that, you know, Lori likes to trade when it's playing well. We know Daryl likes to, to trade it. And we get in the habit of really watching NQ because, you know, it does give us a lot of setups and nothing wrong with that. But how many of you have gotten caught in this whole I tried to get in, it skipped my order. As soon as I got in, it flew the other way, 50 ticks. It, it blew past my stop, it blew past the, as soon as I got in, it zipped the other way. And that market is just zipping, moving, going crazy, right? And we all know that NQ can be like that sometimes, okay? Yeah, I talked to a couple of people, they're like, man, I was down like 600 bucks, like just 30 minutes in this morning, okay? We're not here at Apex just to blow smoke and always talk about the good trades. We talk about the bads as well. We talk about the bad days, the bad mornings, because if you don't talk about the bad, you can't fix the bad, right? Um, and so you hear us talk a lot about reading the markets, gauging the markets, knowing your environment. We talk about a sniper, knowing the, the terrain and the wind and the visibility and all that. Um, you know, we talk about, hey, if NQ is just too fast, you know, look at something else. Well, sometimes people, especially if you're a newer trader, okay, that sounds cool, but what the heck does that mean? How, how do I know? How do I know it's too fast right now and I need to look at something else? And we've talked about that a lot in the room. Lori has as well. We talked about it some this morning. And, and first of all, just, just use some common sense. You know, when you see NQ making, you know, I mean, we saw examples today of it making what? Like just a ridiculous amount of bars in, in no time, right? I mean, right there after open, let me pull this chart over. Don't ask me about this chart right now. We'll get there. Everybody see the chart? You see it? My screen's working here. 
the screen I just pulled over. Yeah, I mean, look at the timestamps this morning, just right here. I mean, this was 9.36. Okay, so I mean, from right here, um, you know, like right in here, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's one minute. And then right here, 9.37. You see that? I mean, when it's just... I mean, come on. Like, that should tell you something. Just when you see all those bars. Like, when you can barely keep up with it and barely keep up with what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, just use common sense there. To say, okay, this market's moving like crazy. Okay? Like, it's so sporadic, it's it's erratic, it's everywhere, okay? Um, also, we've talked a lot about, you know, when you're looking at an order prints only chart, whether you're looking at 10 tick or 30 tick, whatever it may be, um, and, and I'd have to zoom in on this, but we talk a lot about when the market's moving fast and all you're seeing in here is you're seeing some zeros and you're seeing a lot of smaller single digits. And how many of you have looked at this chart, whether you're looking at the one in the room or yourself, but it's a lot clearer to see on, on this chart where it's like order here, order here, order here, boom, then it's down here. Like it just moved like boom, 15 ticks down here and then boom, it pops up here, 10 to and boom. It's erratic, it's jumping, right? We've all seen that. Like you literally just two and then two, two. It's not like it's, oh, I got to fill 500 orders here and then 500 orders here and 500. It's just jumping. Okay. When you see the market just making bar, 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 moving erratic. And when you see these really low numbers on the order prints, and then you see that jumping around. Okay. Just stay out of it. Just don't mess with it. Don't try to mess with it. I don't care if someone else in the trade room says, oh, I got in and I did this. Or we know that Daryl's like, oh, I got in and I'm already up $5,000, right? And that's frustrating to you, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, don't worry about someone else or don't worry about what Daryl did. Look at that and say, I need to stay out right now, okay? Like, I need to not be messing with this right now. And you know, you need to be able to see those single digits. You need to be able to see the market jumping around and stay out. Because if the market's jumping around like that and you can already see it, if you're trying to hop in that market, you're just asking for it. You see it jumping. So you're already asking, you know, for some, you're asking for the market to jump your order or jump your stop or jump your entry or for you to hop in thinking it's going one way, but boom, it's going another way. How many of y'all saw that this morning, right? Oh, the market's moving crazy fast. It's going up, 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 up. And I got in and boom, it immediately went down, 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 down. I got in and it went up, up, up. It's just erratic. That, that's not the time to play. That's not time to be a sniper, okay? Um, so you either want to, you know, sit on your hands and stay out of it and wait for it to calm down. Yeah, a couple of people were like, yeah, I did that. It cost me 400 bucks. It cost me, someone else said like 600. It cost me this, it cost me that. You want to be able to sit on your hands and just wait for it. Wait for it to stop behaving like that. Wait for it to stop having all those zeros and just, you know, very small single digits. And wait till you don't see it jumping around like that. But we saw that this morning, right? We saw it happen a lot this morning. We saw some people get in and get hurt this morning. But then what did I bring up and said, now guys, wait a minute. Look over at ES and look over at YM in the trade room. Remember? And what did we see on those two charts? And for, I, I know several people in the room said something like, oh, wow. Oh, crap. I didn't, wow. They were super smooth. <laughs> Amazing simplicity up, a little chop, and then an amazing simplicity down, just clean, clear runs. Like straight direction up and straight direction down, right? And it was like, oh, wow. Had I been trading that, I'd be like 
way, way up for the day in profit. My heart rate would be pretty calm. My blood pressure would be okay. And it would have been a completely different world of trading, right? A couple you just mentioned. Yeah, this morning cost me this. This morning cost me that. Uh, would have been a lot better day had you recognized these things on NQ and then looked over at those other two markets. It would have been a completely opposite day. Yeah, Kevin, exactly. Would have been a one and done. Whether you got the long going up or the short coming down, both of them were one and done type trades, right? And then I don't remember who it was that brought up in the room this morning like hey is this a potential jft on ym it was i think it was around 10 50 this morning it was a little before 11 right somewhere in there and i said i looked it up and i said yep yeah, hey that's a that's a great potential jft but if you get in it be aware of what's going to be above you at about 50 ticks away there's there's all these lines there's all these levels you need to either be getting out there and take your profit or you need to expect some stuff there. And it went straight to that, right? Yeah, Robin, was it you that brought it up? And it went straight to it. And if you got out right there, you got 50 ticks. And even if that was the only trade you took for the day and you had to sit there from 930 until 11 Eastern and all you got was even that one JFT and just got out right there for 50 ticks, You'd have walked away having waited for a great setup, avoided all the crap, avoided, you know, the temptation to get in on the crap. You'd have walked away with 50 ticks. Okay, yeah, David, I think you brought it up first too, right? Yeah, that's right. So for those of you that are in there and saw that, I think that was a good lesson because unfortunately, a few of you got hit on NQ playing in the craziness a couple others saw hey i had beautiful es or ym going up beautiful one going down i'm done and out like there was a few people like hey i'm done and out if you got just the jft even if that was all you got i got 50 and got out okay and so i want you to think about that and today was a good lesson to remember regret right because when you're sitting there and you're sitting there and you're trying to be patient and you're bored and you want to press a button and NQ's going crazy and you're like, oh, well, maybe now or, or maybe now. Or we talked about this earlier, right? Someone said, oh, man, I got in on that and it zipped and moved real quick in my favor and I made hundreds. I, man, this is awesome. I love fast markets. And then I got in again and boom, I lost it all plus more. Oh, man. Okay, I learned my lesson on that. So you got to really focus on that battle with yourself right because what are you going to regret more are you going to regret that you jumped in on that zippy market you knew you shouldn't and you lost or are you going to regret that i didn't take anything taking nothing for the day is a lot better than being down for the day right and you and you see that if you're patient and wait, those couple of good ones came. That big JFT came. If you stopped looking at NQ because it was crazy and went over to ES and YM, you would have had a beautiful day. Everybody agree with that? This all the YM and ES simplicity trades today. And we didn't even catch them right away because we were so talking about the craziness on NQ, right? So just a reminder to keep that in mind. Uh, do not jump the gun. Just be patient and we saw today how they'll come. And don't be tempted to get on that NQ craziness. Look at those other markets. Also use micros when the markets are crazy, okay? So be patient, it pays off. Today was a perfect example of that, okay? So keep an eye on that. When that market's making a ton of bars really quick, when it's zipping all over the place and when that op and when it's jumping prices and when that op chart is having those real small mixture of like small single digits and zeros just stay out of it until it starts playing nicer okay i equated it this morning to hey i've got to go run an errand i can do it any time of the day i'm on no schedule 
why do I choose to go at five o'clock when I know there's gridlock traffic? Just wait till the traffic's over or do it before the traffic. Or if Google Maps is telling me when I pull up the map, oh, I see red right here on the highway. I see yellow right here on the highway. There's a wreck, there's an accident, there's construction, there's traffic right now. Let me just go a little later. Why do I wanna go sit in that? I can do something else with my time and get to it later when it clears up, okay? And seeing those bars, seeing that order prints chart, especially, it's kind of like, you've heard me say that before in webinars, it's kind of like your Google map, your magnifying glass into your roadway of what's going on, okay? So pays to be patient. All right, so you guys kind of voted today in the elite room. Daryl was gonna do the webinar tonight and do a little bit of a trade walkthrough, but uh, we talked a little bit that I would do it and give you a quick overview of the trend bias filter. Some of you know what this is. Um, some of you use it. Some of you do not know what it is. So I wanted to just kind of briefly show it to you, show you where to find it, how to add it to your charts and a couple ways to use it and not use it. Okay, so it's, it's an apex indicator we have. It's an algorithm that's kind of a combination of several things combined. Um, it's a little bit different type of trend um, identifier compared to, um, you know, our apex pattern or DR and stuff like that. It works a little bit different. I'm going to show you. It is a delayed indicator. Okay. I, I want to tell you that up front and make sure you understand this. It's a delayed indicator. What do I mean by that? Meaning it's not going to flip to show a long trend at the very beginning of a long trend. Okay, it's only going to flip to show you a long trend when a long trend has been confirmed already. Okay, so it will get you in late or it will give you a heads up late that the trend is now long or the trend is now short and, and vice versa. Okay, now that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. So it'll miss, it'll miss the initial move of a market and then when it reverses, that's a little delayed too until it's confirmed. So there's goods and bads to that, right? I mean, the bad is, oh, I want to know right away. Oh, I want to know early. Well, the good is, eh, you're not going to get in early and, you know, be wrong, right? There, there's goods and bads to both of it. So for a new trader, this can be very helpful because it's something I hear a lot from new traders is, look, I hear you guys talk about only take you know, these trades in a trend. Well, and, and, and be careful for ranging markets. I, I'm i new, I'm still learning. I'm still learning what half the crap on this chart is, much less to know a range versus trending market. And so for newer traders, it can be very helpful. Even though it will be a little delayed, it can be helpful to say, I'm just gonna wait for this thing to show long. Okay, it, now I know it's long, right? For veteran traders, it might be a little too delayed for you. You may not like it as much, but it can still be a good confirmation, uh, an added confirmation on top of everything else. It's also something that makes it easy to scan multiple markets if you're watching more than one market. This is something that you can look up at your chart and, and glance at real quick, you know, to see if there's, you know, a, a consistent trend between all the indices or, or a consistent chop between all the indices or just a quick, kind of quick view okay now I'm gonna show you a little later in the webinar where to find it in your toolkit how to add it to your chart and all that because if I show you that now none of you are gonna pay attention you're all gonna be loading on your dang chart so follow along I'll show you here in a minute okay so now tonight I'm not teaching you rules I'm not changing all the rules I'm not teaching you a new system I'm not teaching you a new strategy I'm showing you another tool everybody understand that okay this is an extra tool to help you I'm not going through changing every rule that's out there I might give you flexibility on one rule and I'll show you that otherwise this is not rules this is tools keep that in mind so I'm just gonna bring back over this blank chart I had okay and this is just a 10 tick uh, diagnostic chart okay and this down here is the trend bias filter indicator, okay? And I'll, we'll 
you know, you can add it on to your sniper chart, whatever chart you want. You can, you know, expand it, make it small. You don't need it real big. You just need to see the colors, right? And it's not real complicated to use or to understand what it is. Green means confirmed uptrend. Red, here notice it didn't flip to red long, means downtrend. Yellow, you automatically think yellow means chop, right? Well, green means up, red means down, that's easy, okay? Like for example, DR, DR is only green or red, right? And we know how we're careful when DR gets real low. Why is that? Well, it could be a shift in momentum, shift in volume, but it also could be a shift from green to red, right? Because DR has to go back down to switch colors. So this is a little bit different. It's not just green or red. Sometimes it's yellow. Yellow can mean chop. Yellow can mean range. Yellow could also just simply mean a shift from a downtrend going into neutral mode until it confirms an uptrend. So do not always just jump to the conclusion that yellow always means um, chop, okay? Um, for an example, this is all green right here, right? Everybody see this? It's all green. And it's all the way green until about here right and then notice this comes way down pulls up comes down pulls up comes down doesn't flip to red till about right here on this move up let me switch crosshairs here doesn't flip to green till about here you see what i mean by a delayed indicator it doesn't just switch to green because you got four green bars Okay, it's, it's not as reactive as DR. It's a little longer term trend bias compared to DR, right? Just like we have different ways of looking at divergence or different ways of looking at hidden divergence. This is a different way of looking at the trend. So that's kind of an example of what I mean by it's a little delayed. It's not gonna just print four bars and say, oh, now we're in an uptrend. No, that doesn't work either, right? So just in a nutshell, that's how it works there. Now, granted right here, 935, we're still in, you know, we're still in some dark zone. But just in general, just so you understand the concept here, when I'm in confirmed green and I've got a trend going up and then I've got what? A pullback, right? And then the trend going up and a pullback trend going up and a pullback and so on, right? So an easy quick view of my chart is green. Yes, I see it going up. Now here comes a pullback. Well, the first thing I wanna be on the lookout for is right here, right? Do I get a detector going off right there, giving me a potential long trade? Do I have a detector going off right here giving me a potential long trade. Do I have a detector going off right here, giving me a potential long trade, and so on, right? Kind of makes for a little bit of an easy view. You guys, you guys see that? Now, you kind of have this already with DR, okay? But this one is a little bit um, Delayed is probably not the long, right word. It's not as reactive as DR, okay? It's gonna stay in a state of green a little longer, okay? It's kind of showing you a shorter term and a longer term. Make sense? But it makes for a quick view of, all right, we're in an uptrend, market's going up as it pulls back, I wanna be ready for a potential move up, potential move up, potential move up, okay? Yeah, a wider picture, okay? Or, What's the other thing it could be telling you? All right, we're in an uptrend, so I only want to take long trades. Unless I start seeing ODD up here to take a short, right? Everybody get that? So 
it's just a little bit different way of looking at the market okay now there are some times all right here again we turn green here again we turn green so right here see this yellow here well it was green as we're coming up but then as the market starts to come down right in here it's like wait a minute we might be shifted into a short trend so it goes yellow but wait now we come up pull down now we come up pull down now we come up make a higher high notice the route right in there it turns green so see yellow is not always chop yellow could also be the shift of a trend okay yeah david that's what i've said several times it's a lagging indicator okay it's it's a lagging indicator it's going to require some confirmation of a change so for example right here it doesn't turn green till right in here so that means here when the market came up and pulled down and came up and pulled down it started to come up yeah i mean that was a start of a new trend this indicator is not going to confirm for you the start of a new trend it's going to give you a little bit later lagging confirmation okay now, like i said for some of you you might be like man i really like to see the beginning of that trend i don't know if i use this indicator much some of you might say as crazy as some of these markets are i don't mind waiting for a better confirmation or again maybe you're a new trader that says i, I need this i know i'm going to give up trades i know this is going to give me less trades i know it'll get me in later to the game i know i'll miss out but i like the fact that i can wait for that to set up and happen okay so like in here you know it goes from yellow to red yellow to red you can see that overall the market's going down but that's not a clear trend down is it you got all kind of choppiness in here and then down and then choppiness in here and down so it's giving you a heads up to be careful there okay um when you see it going from one color to the other color to the other color it's choppy or it's a very non-clear trend right but then you get back into a little bit clearer type situations where you're green and can look for the continuation or green and can look for a continuation here this one wouldn't have got you far but it gives you a little better idea of what to look for to know hey i'm only looking for longs unless maybe up in here we get an odd right then it goes in here and goes yellow and yeah we up and down and up and down but then we back up and yeah we're chopping okay um then we're back into some longs to start looking for those potential you know continuations in the trend okay so it's it's a really simple indicator all right and yeah, I think this was one of the times I, I mentioned this morning. I was like, guys, look at the time. It's 10.03. Over here is still 10.03. The market just went up like 20 bar. And then down. This was all in a minute. I think we talked about this right here. Guys, why? Why are you even trying to trade this market? Right? It's like, stay out of it. Okay, and just wait and give it some time. All right, so this is the um, trend bias indicator. Today might not have been the best example of a day to show you on NQ because it's just back and forth, back and forth, right? But that was NQ today, wasn't it? Okay, but then you get back into a situation here of green and you can start being on the lookout for those pullbacks and seeing what trades are there going in the direction of the trend going in the direction of the trend bias indicator okay um i think i have it on a let's see here david i think i've got it on a ym chart i'll pull that up here in just a second okay um let's see here donald says i've not have noticed while using it that if ranging is going on it won't switch to red or green until it breaches the range area yeah when it's ranging like that a lot it's just like 
gridlocked yellow until it breaks out okay so it, it's designed for a specific reason it's clearly a delayed indicator but it's designed to be just a tr you know it's going to confirm that trend okay like here when we switch to short okay i see it going short i see it making lower lows when it's making pullbacks i'm looking for those trades right making the pullback i'm looking for those trades or i'm looking for the divergence at the bottom okay I any questions on this it's it's pretty basic and pretty simple okay um actually let me address a let me address a couple things this is the one rule that i'm going to throw out there that is very specific so pay close attention to it using this indicator can get you around one rule okay with um with conditions let me pull this over here. Here's a yes. Right here. Market comes up. Market comes down. Market goes up. Comes down. Goes up. Right? So we see this big trend up. Right here, the market comes down. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. And notice down here, we've got a detector. We've got a TX right here going up. Standard rules. Would we take this trade? Give me some feedback. Standard rules, will we take that trade right there? Okay, everybody's saying no. Okay. So, correct. Because it's against DR, right? Because right here is the market's going up, the DR is green. And right here, the DR has turned red. Why is it turned red? Well, because there's been enough bars to pull down to cause DR to turn red. Notice down here, the trend bias is not flipped yet because it's a little bit of a delayed indicator. It takes a bigger move for it to flip it. Okay. Now, but um, what do we have right here? What is this orange right here? Well, we've got a Paul, right? Okay. I'm sorry. Right, this Paul right here. I'm sorry. This is a Paul. Okay. So also this reversal TX laid a mini magnet on an existing Paul. Okay. So that makes it an ETX, right? So with that being the case, we would have went ahead and taken the trade. Okay. Now, let's just say, for example that was not an ETX, okay? Let's say either the Paul was gone or the mini magnet was gone, right? Everybody agree, if one of those was gone, it would not be an ETX. If the Paul was not there or the mini magnet was not there, it would not technically be an ETX, right? But it wasn't, but let's say only one of them was gone, meaning your trend bias is still long, okay? Market comes up, makes a pullback, You've got a long, you've got a reversal long TX here. Generally, we wouldn't take it because DR is red. But let's say it was bouncing off of a Paul. Or there was no Paul, but there was a TX plus a mini magnet. My point is this. The trend bias can, in this case, in a trending situation, it can override the DR rule only if that trade would also be like a number three or four from Thrive. Does that make sense? I mean, we already kind of talked about that with Thrive in general, but if it's just a random TX by itself, not enough. But if there's something added to it and the trend bias is still in the same direction, 
then that can be a little bit of an override there. Does that, does that make sense? Is that clear? Um, you could, yeah, you could say that's HD because this pullback here at 36,000 was a lot bigger than this little pullback here, but that's right at the breakout there. I, I'm not going to personally consider that much of an HD. You know what I mean? Also, it's comparing two bars compared to seven or eight. I, I'm not going to be real. I'm not, I'm not going to call that too much, too much of an HD because this is still in a choppy breakout area. Does that, does that make sense? I'm not going to consider that personally to be, to be HD. Okay. So I know one of the questions that, um, I've had before and Kevin, this is exactly what I'm about to tell you. Kevin just asked it literally what I was about to say. Um, larger charts. Hey, can I use this on a 30 tick chart? Okay. Well, I slapped it on my 30 just to show you. Um, my answer to that is going to be 90% no. Because what did we already learn about this indicator? Is it fast or slow? <laughs> is it up front or a little delayed? It's a little bit of a delayed indicator, lagging indicator. So when you go and put it on a 30 tick chart, it's going to take quite a few more bars for it to flip. Does that make sense? So it's not going to be extremely useful on a 30 tick bar because, I mean, like, look at this move down. You know what I mean? It didn't really flip to short till right here. You know what I mean? Didn't even, never flipped to long. This move down didn't really flip to short till way down here. So we know it's a delayed indicator. Put it on a big 30 tick chart or like a continuum chart. It's just going to be very, very delayed. Does that, does that make sense? It's not going to be super useful to you on a 30 tick chart in general. Everybody get that. Any questions about that? When I say 90% no, and here's why. Now, here's the 10% where I say yes. And again, this is not a rule, it's a tool, right? Days like today, craziness. Or actually, let's go back to what we were just looking at. Remember when I said, oh guys, let me look at this from here. It went all the way down, put it all the way down. It didn't even turn red till right here. That's a pretty big move down on a 30 tick chart to wait for a flip, isn't it guys? Right? I mean, that's a, that's on a, on a 30 tick chart. That's a big move down waiting on a flip, isn't it? But look at the timestamp of where I'm holding it right here, 1024. And look at the timestamp up here, 1021. So that's a big move, but it's also three freaking minutes. Do you get that? So what I'm trying to say is this. In a standard day-to-day -day regular moving market or on like an ES or Y, on an ES or YM market, no, don't worry about it on a big chart. On a easy moving NQ day, don't worry about it on a big chart. Make sense? It's too delayed, too big a bars, too big a chart. No. But on a day like today, how many of you got hit? Because you thought it was going one way and it zipped another. And you thought it was going the other and it zipped back. So on a crazy moving day like today, where this looks like, oh my God, that's such a big move waiting on that flip. That was three minutes. Three minutes. Right? Or let's take a 
let me let me let me show you this this might make a little more sense so here's NQ today right and from this morning here's a 10 tick chart right I mean just look at this thing it is zipping all over the place zipping all over the place oh look we're trending up Wait, now we're coming down a little bit, then we're trending up. What are we doing? We're zipping, are we up? Oh wait, now here's some, now it looks like it's trending down. And then there's this big up and down. And then, oh wait, now we're going down. Okay, it's 10.06, 10.08. Oh, now we're in a downtrend. Oh wait, but I got hit. It flew up, now it's coming down, 10.16. Oh wait, now it's going up, 10.20. Now it's going down, 10.26. 10:30. We're all over the place, right? I mean, just all over the freaking place. Look at the 30 this morning at the same time frame. With the trend filter bias on it. From from 9:30 to 10:04, it stayed long right I'm still gonna tell you when NQ is moving like it was today to stay out of NQ and look at these other markets because we already talked about how great that would have been right but if I'm ever going to consider trying to take something in a market like this could this be that 10% of the time where I say yes you can reference it on a 30 tick to say, okay, I probably need to stay out of this just completely. But if I see anything start to slow down or, or see the order print start to get a little better, but I still, it's a, it's still a crazy market. Maybe I only take longs off of my 10 tick, or maybe I only take longs off of my simplicity chart. Maybe I don't try to get caught in Oh, now it's starting to come down and let me get in a simplicity and oh wait, that was a three minute move and zip, wait up and wait, simplicity down, wait up, wait. Maybe in a crazy market, I see this, I'm only going to consider something long. Off of my 10 tick or simplicity. That makes sense? But that's only in a crazy market what I worry about even looking at that. Still your best move is just to switch over, okay? So, um, you know, or even here, it feels like this took a long time to flip, but I mean, this was just a matter of a few minutes and it's like, all right, now I'll look at shorts, you know? Or this after, or later on, you know, from this 12 minutes here, just long, you know, and then clearly long again, and so on, okay? So that's just another potential way to use it on a crazy big day. You're still better off just using a different market though, okay? But, you know, if I'm a simplicity trader and I see that the 30 tick is long and I see that my 10 tick is long and I get a long simplicity, I'm going to feel good about it. Or if I see that they're all green and simplicity is green and starting to get a pullback for an LRE, seeing that the trend bias filter is also still green after that pullback, could give me a little extra confirmation for that simplicity, right? Okay, or again, if I'm a new trader and I'm still just having trouble understanding what is range, what is chop, what is trend, this might be really helpful to like, okay, I'm gonna rely on this a little bit more. I know it's delayed. I know it's gonna give me some, you know, less signals or whatever, but it'll. I'd rather have less then have more bad stuff, right? And just wait till it starts. Okay, I can see that it's trending down and this confirms. Perfect. 
you know, I'm still new and figure this out. Now I can check some of these pullbacks. And now I can start watching these pullback areas to see if these reversal bars have a valid setup on them. Or an up, you know, is there a divergence? So it could be a little bit helpful, especially for some newer traders there. Okay. Um, so add this on, check it out, play with it, get get a hang of it though. Don't add it on tomorrow morning and start trading live money based on it. It's not a rule. It's a tool. It's just something extra for you to use. That's an easy, good reference, especially for newer traders. Also, call it out in the room. Be like, you know, all right, guys, hey, you know, we got a green trend bias. Let's be looking for, you know, for trades to the north side. All uh, right, yeah, we've, okay, trend bias has gone yellow. So, guys, are we chopping? Are we ranging? Or are we going to flip? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, Robert could use it for that too. Absolutely. Okay, so where do you find it? Well, obviously you see here that I already have it added on to my sniper charts. Okay. But basically you can just open your sniper chart and you just hit right click. You go to indicators. And give it a minute to pop up. And then right here under indicators, you scroll down. Find the T's where it says Apex, you know, futures. We're in the F's there. Go to, go down to the T's and it's under right there. Apex trend bias filter. Okay. And here, let me do something just to show you. Um, where is it? I'm going to remove it and add it back on. So you just click, double click, trend bias filter. You don't need to mess with any settings and just hit OK. All right. Now, if this is the first time doing it, when your sniper chart pops back up, it's going to be a little out of whack and you'll have to just adjust it. And I'll show you what I mean here. Um, give it just a second. All right, guys. So how many of y'all have used this indicator before, or have it on your charts from when we released it several months ago? Has anybody used this? Anybody looked at it in the past? Okay, Craig, you have? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's not for everyone. Some of it's a style thing. Some of it's, you know, hey, I like to find things earlier. Some people are saying, hey, it's on my charts. I love it. I use it. It's a great confirmation. Helps me stay focused. Yep, easy to scan markets. Okay, so again, it's just an extra potential tool for you to use. Check it out. Um, yeah, a couple people say, hey, I, I, I've added it on, but I really wasn't sure what it was. I haven't really used it. Okay, so check that out. Um, okay, so my chart reloaded. When you reload your chart, so everybody got that, you right click, open your sniper chart, right click, go to indicators. Find the trend bias indicator, add it on. When your chart loads, it's going to look something like this. When your chart loads the first time, you're going to be all out of whack like this because it just added on a new bottom study indicator here. Okay? Don't freak out. Literally, all you got to do is grab it right there, squeeze it down, little as you want it, and then grab your detectors and squeeze them back down how you want it and then grab your DR and bring it back down and you're all back to normal okay that's literally all you got to do to add it on to any of your charts okay and and it's right there and and again you don't need to see it's not like DR or something else you're not looking for big hills and little hills and what I mean you can make that thing small you just need to be able to briefly see is it you know yellow red or green so it's not going to take up a lot of real estate space for you. Okay. So there you go, guys. Let's make sure to, um, if you want to try that, add it onto your chart. Let's uh, call up, 
call it out tomorrow in the room. You know, help other people be aware of it. Hey, trend bias is green, trend bias is orange or yellow. Let's watch and see what it's going to do. Be very careful tomorrow morning. We've seen how the markets have been. Keep an eye right there at open. You're so eager, you know, okay, 935, boom. Now I can start pressing buttons. Well, ask yourself, should I? Okay, should I? Should I press buttons? What is NQ doing? Is there too many bars? Is it too fast? Is that order print chart jumping around? Is there a lot of zeros and ones and twos? Should I be trading it right now or not? If I'm seeing all that, then stop. Save yourself the pain and heartache tomorrow, okay? If it's zipping around, sit on your hands or look at YMNES. Make sure they're not doing the same thing. Focus on trading them until you see NQ slow back down, okay? A lot of people learn that lesson the hard way, the painful way, and let's not do that. Now, Kevin, there's really no parameters to play with on that or settings. It's, it's all um, defaulted. Uh, nothing really to, to play with there uh, without messing it up, honestly. So I don't really think there is any um, much of a, anything adjustable on it anyway. So was that helpful at all, guys, especially those of you that are new, that have talked about struggling with the trend? Maybe this is something that could, you know, help you out. Okay. Um, Robert, you know, as far as uh, with asking him about help with Nadex trades, um, you know, there's a couple of Nadex traders in the room, but really the best thing to do there is if you're trading, you know, Nadex knockouts, you know, learn to trade the simplicity charts that are in the room and trade those just like we trade futures or micro futures. Even if you just take the, the middle, you know, the middle knockout there, don't take the highest risk one or lowest risk one, one in the middle, trade with the trend with, um, with simplicity would be my biggest recommendation to you there, Robert. Okay. Because, I mean, the, the knockouts are pretty close to trading, you know, a couple of micro contracts. So just trade them that same way. And the charts are right there in the room. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Uh, Daryl will be in the room tomorrow morning pre-open. And then he's going to have to take off around open or right after. He's got something going on with Judah. Um, so be in the room early tomorrow before open if you want a little time in there with Daryl uh, then I'm going to try to be on a little after open and uh, we'll see how Lori's looking okay so thanks for being here guys appreciate it y'all have a good night check out that indicator and we'll see you tomorrow all right guys thanks so much y'all have a great one good night Jack have a good one sharps thank you Craig appreciate it buddy all right guys later